Adobe Photoshop on the web delivers core Photoshop capabilities in a reimagined web-based interface. To access the application, you don't need to download and install it. Simply point your web browser to photoshop.adobe.com. Here on the home screen, you can begin by dragging an image from your computer, browsing your local files, or simply creating a new document by clicking the New File button on the upper right-hand corner. For now, I'm just going to begin with an image I have on my local machine by dragging and dropping it here. Now that we're in the app, let's take a look at some of the interface options. On the left, you'll notice the toolbar. Each icon indicates a tool category. When I click on a category, a second panel opens to the right, revealing all of the tools within. I can always collapse the panel to save some room by clicking on the arrows here. Now when I hover over each tool icon, the collection panel opens up to the right automatically. Towards the top, I have some document level controls, like the name of the document. I can rename the document by clicking on it, and then in the drop-down, selecting Rename. To the right of the name is a browser zoom level control. I can select my zoom level in the drop-down here, or zoom in and out using a scroll wheel on my mouse, or pinch and spread on a trackpad. I can also use keyboard shortcuts, Command on Mac or Control on Windows, then the plus and minus keys. The panels here to the right of the application can be toggled on or off by clicking on their respective icon. The first hides or shows the Layers panel. Notice when I opened this image, the application automatically created my first layer. I'll go ahead and rename that layer by double-clicking on it, assigning a new name, and then pressing Return on the keyboard. Next, I can toggle on or off properties, then below that, any comments I might have made or received from my collaborators. I'll go ahead and stick with the Layers and Properties panel open for now. One of the exciting aspects of Photoshop on the web is the way it hides and shows powerful controls based on what it is that I'm doing on the canvas. I'll make some changes, and as I do so, I'll show you how the interface adapts. To begin with, I'd like to adjust the dimensions of the original image. I'll change the zoom level so that the image fits my screen using Command on Mac or Control on Windows and the number 0. Then in the Tools area, I'll select the Crop tool here in the Size and Position panel. Holding the Shift key while I resize would retain the height to width ratio. I'd like to change that a bit, so without the Shift key held down, I'll take away some of the content here towards the bottom. Once I'm happy with the changes, I can apply them by pressing the Return key. Next, I'd like to remove the background here and replace it with another image. And this is where the contextual taskbar comes in handy. It keeps track of where I am in the application and dynamically changes to show me possible next steps in my process. When I click on Remove Background, Photoshop detects the subject of my image and removes the background automatically. Notice in the Layers panel, Photoshop has created a layer mask. From here, I can always fine tune the work if I'd like, it's looking good to me, so let's go ahead and keep going. I have a nice New England shoreline that I'd like to use for my background. I'll just grab that from my local machine and drag it onto the canvas. Once I place and resize it a bit, Photoshop creates a new layer with that image in the Layers panel. I'd like to reorder it so that it sits behind my headshot, and for that, I'll click and drag it down in the stack. I think it'll also help if I move my headshot off to the side a bit. So I'll go ahead and select that layer, and in the Properties panel, I'm going to flip the headshot horizontally by clicking the Flip icon. And then here on the Design Canvas, I'll drag it off to the side just a bit more. To add a bit of depth to the background, I can apply a Gaussian Blur. I'll make sure I have the background layer selected. Then in the Tools area, I'll hover over the Adjust category and select Gaussian Blur. I can set the blur level in the contextual taskbar below, then press the Done button to apply the change. I like the composition a lot now, but my face seems a bit bright relative to this background. So the last adjustment I'll make will be to correct for that. With the headshot layer selected, in the Adjust area, I'll select Brightness and Contrast, and I'll pull the brightness down a little bit. Let's go ahead and do one more thing, and that's add a headline to my promotion. I'll select the text tool in the tools area, then I'll press and drag to create a text container on the canvas. From here, I'll type out my headline, and with the text still selected, I can experiment with the font, color, and some spacing attributes until things start to look the way I'd like them to. 
I can go ahead and move this text layer between my photo and the background and make sure that the placement works. Best of all, the changes I've made here are non-destructive. I can hide and show a layer, I can undo my changes, or refine any of them at any time. With my design all set, I have a few choices for my next step. I can download my finished image to my local machine by clicking the download button. I can share it with a client or a colleague and ask them for feedback by clicking the share button. Any feedback they include will appear here in the comments panel. Or if I want to make more advanced changes in the desktop version of Adobe Photoshop, I can click open in desktop app. In any case, all of the work I've done here is automatically saved in Creative Cloud and logging into my account from any computer will allow me to continue working with the file. Well, that concludes this roundup for Photoshop on the web. The product is actively being developed, so please check back for the latest enhancements, and don't forget to give us feedback by clicking on the feedback menu here in the upper right-hand corner.